Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we thank you as we continue on Do Not Worry series of Daily Gospel, uh, that we will not worry, Lord. <laughs> Help us not to worry. That's your present imperative active command. Oh, shalalala. They will not sin against you by worrying about tomorrow, what to wear, what to eat. Look at the birds, Lord. Look at the lily of the fields. In Jesus' name. Wow. Let's be the example of faith as, as conspicuous as possible that we'll represent faith. Amen. And uh, we're kind of joking about in our family meeting that uh, one of our a relative became a, a pretty wonderful news of becoming a, a CFO of a company. So, you know, we're celebrating and clapping. Wow, well, you know, so-and-so became the CFO of a company. And I said, oh, is that chief fate officer? And we were kind of laughing. Are you a chief finance officer of your family or chief fate officer of the family? I guess I am. Trying to be both. <laughs> Live by faith. And take care of the finance. This is what Calvin wrote. Um, yesterday, we read, I tell you the truth. The Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these, was not able to. And Calvin writes, by anxiety about the present life, the more do we show our unbelief. If everything does not happen to our wish, many persons according to who in great prosperity appear to possess faith or at least to have tolerable share of it, tremble when any danger of poverty present itself. Wow. So challenge is this. And that's why I think Jesus said that rich is so difficult for rich to go to heaven. Why? Because if you're a billionaire, no, honestly, and you don't, you, you don't really pray about daily bread, because it's like, well, you know, daily bread. And talk about hundred. I I could feed me and my rest of my descendant for next hundred years, right? If you have several billion dollars. So for him to really honestly pray for daily bread, is it possible? And what? Why? Why would he think about you know and? All his prosperity, you know, so, oh, yeah, he's full of faith. Yeah, he prays. Oh, it seems like his faith. No, but your confidant, your, your mammon, your confidence is in the wealth. Imagine him stripped down completely, right? And then he dies and he stands before God naked. Would he have faith? Would he be able to say that, yeah, I had faith? Wow. I think as we get older, God challenges us at different level. Higher level, higher devil, and higher level, higher faith. Uh, when you're young, you had faith for certain projects, certain amounts, certain things. And toward the end, you feel like, gosh, you know, what you did and what you're good for is not good enough anymore kind of feeling and I, I actually went through that wow the end of November I went through some whew, major crisis of faith it's like all the stuff that we plan um, it's just like it was like experiencing Joe in one day everything collapsed you know we had an incredible future plan 2024 and everything was said we had all this organizationally everything and all, all the funding was promised, and and then it just collapsed on one day. Wow. See? And then when I read this, who in prosperity appeared to possess faith, or at least have tolerable share of it, tremble when any danger of poverty present itself. And I start trembling, like, oh, how am I going to do that project without that funding? You know, uh, wow, we need at least $150,000 for that project to continue next year. Uh, we had, you know, we, we thought we had it. And well, we start with zero, almost zero. I'm like, okay. And then I start tremble, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? 
<laughs> and then I start worrying, worrying, worrying. Like, and Lord says, do not worry. I worry. Bam, bam, bam. Stop shooting. Bam, bam, bam. I said, stop shooting. Stop worrying now. So I said, yes, Lord. Look at the birds. Look at the field and the lilies and the wildflowers. They are beautiful. They are being fed, right? So the, it continues. But if God so close the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You little faith. You of little faith. Wow. You e of little faith. Ah, I thought I was a CFO, chief faith officer. No, I was a chief fake officer. I was faking my faith, oh God. Because everything was going well. I'm so full of faith when everything goes well. But what if not things go right? You know, and it's not as go as you plan, you desire, you want, you wish. Then are you full of faith? Hmm. So good, right? Now the furnace, it says that, you know, not only the in, in those days, in that area, they will cut this wild and then dry it dump it into the furnace and the word furnace here actually is we're talking about or the commentary talks about how in palestine um they use this little earthen vessel portable earthen vessel to pour for the baking their bread in the field so and you know they don't use you know like um wood burning wood and no it's just common thing it's just all this grass they will cut it and burn it in the field so that they could bake their bread and god says all these clothes are like grass but if god so close the grass of the field which are alive today and throw into furnace it, it, how much more right how much more therefore Take no thought. Once again, do not be anxious. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what, what we will we drink? Or what will we wear? Hmm. Psalm 1115. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we look around them in every direction without looking at God of whom alone their eye ought to be fixed this is what Calvin says this is the same object with the former doctrine believers ought to rely on God's fatherly care to expect that he will bestow upon them whatever they feel to be necessary and not to torment themselves by unnecessary anxiety well I thought about the war that was happening and, you know, uh, Israel and Hamas is fighting. And I wonder what people in Palestine are thinking, you know. And they are being bombed because they are considered um, the evil people, the evil Muslims. And, and yet they are Christians. They are crying out to God. They are crying in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, save us. They are killing us calling us Muslim, you know, um, evil people. Wow. How do you, how do we do with that? I think here we're talking about focus. He says, when your eyes healthy, single-minded, you're not double vision. You're not seeing two things. You're seeing one. And if we are just focused on the Lord and do not give yourself to the nonsense. Then, then and only then for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Wow. So Kierkegaard's two books. Look at the birds of the air and learn from the lilies and the pagans, the worries of the pagans. Two books Kierkegaard wrote. 
which we're now publishing. And, you know, this kind of really speaks. <laughs> this two books speaks to me because we had 2024 plan to publish more books, but things didn't go as well as we planned in terms of financially. We, we needed about 150,000. Uh, for everything to go well and and bottom was pulled out you know it just yeah people who promised uh just yeah decide not to at the last minute and so and we were kind of bummed and i started worrying you know because i'm the cfo chief fate officer and chief finance officer of the organization and and so i heard lord speaking stop worrying Look at the birds of the air and don't be like pagan, worrying about what to wear, how, where would money come so we could publish more. Kierkegaard books who wrote and taught us not to worry. <laughs> wow, what an incredible time. So Lord, yes, I will not, will not, I will not the negative unbelievers thought dominate our mind. Heavenly Father, you know all things and you'll provide and you'll be the most glorious testimony. Glorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you guys. See you tomorrow. Mwah.